25 minutes before 11 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in this Thursday morning. We were just talking about interpreting dreams, and I think the next topic is going to be just as fascinating. The question I have, though, is this. If you could communicate with plants, Mm -hmm. what would you eat? I mean, I, it's, it's bad oh. enough you have to feel bad about eating an animal, but then now, now you can communicate with, what would you ever eat? I mean, you'd walk out into a field of corn and have a conversation with someone, oh, I can't be eating you guys. I mean, you, <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 I don't know what I would do. Uh, we have a really fun story to talk to you about. The book is called Freaks of Nature. It's a novel for young adults. When my son was a young adult, he's now an adult. <laughs> he's going to be 30 next year, right? Uh, mm-hmm. he, uh, he loved the, the book's that uh, were written for his age group. Uh, Wendy Brother Lynn may have even written some of the things he was watching on Nickelodeon because she wrote for the TV show Are You Afraid of the Dark? And I seem to remember that show came on a lot in our in our home back in those days. This new book, Freaks of Nature, um, surely could be made into any anything, but it, it stands alone, of course, as a book. And it does feature a character. And, and the, the word psionic, I don't know if that word psionic is something uh, that that Wendy Brotherlin made up or not. I just don't know. Uh, Wendy Brotherlin. Good morning, Wendy. Good morning. Where, where How are, are you? Good. Where, where are you calling from? Maine. The state of Maine. How is the weather in Maine right now? Oh, it's beautiful. <laughs> I, bet, I bet it is. This is a good time of year for the Northeast. Yes, it is. It's, per- it's perfect weather right now to get out and walk around, um, enjoy the nature. Lots of trees. Lots of and trees. Plants. And and you can talk to them. <laughs> I could. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> My character in the novel could, definitely. <laughs> well, this is fascinating, and, and your history is fascinating, so thank you for being on the air with us today. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thank you for having me. Did you did you have a uh, uh, feedback from the from the the viewers of of the Nickelodeon show? Well, um, I know the shows that I wrote. If, if I do um, go on the internet and go to the fan sites, um, they seem to have liked the shows that I wrote at that time. I have uh, lots of uh, young people or. I should say they're in their late twenties and thirties, early thirties. Yeah, now. that's my son. <laughs> my, my son is in that group. I know, I know. I, I mean, they all have their favorite shows. <laughs> so. my, my son, my son used to like the Goosebumps books, and I know. I, 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 the way I understand it, the guy who wrote the books oversaw the writing. I don't know. I don't know if I'm saying the wrong thing or not, but I don't quite understand I, that. But he loved those I books. Know, yes, yes, and um, Goosebumps is a totally different thing than Are You Afraid of the Dark? Are You Afraid of the Dark was one of the first. TV shows for tweens at the time. Um, you know, now you have Disney and Nickelodeon has a whole bunch of shows for that um, early teenage, just to become teenage age group. But at the time, they, there wasn't anything on TV for them, except for cartoons, of course. Right, so right, right, talking right. about realistic anthologies that were going on. So it was one of the first of its kind, and it, was, it, was, it happened to be my first job out of film school. And um, I really enjoyed it. And DJ McHale is the creator, and he also is a very um, popular author as well. He he penned the Pen Dragon series for middle grade. Oh wow! So yes, he's he's a very successful author, director. I mean, producer. You name it. So <laughs> it was a pleasure to work with him. So I, I never played the game Dungeons and Dragons. I think that's what it's called, right? But is that yes. where the, is that where the term psionic powers comes from? Yes. Yes, I have to give that one to uh, Gary Gygax and uh, the creator of Dungeons and Dragons way back in the day. And um, it just means psychic powers. It's another name, Scion, P-S-I-O-N. Okay. And okay. I did not make up that, that term. <laughs> but, but, it's, but what does it mean exactly? What is a psionic power? A psionic power would be like anything you can do with your mind, um, telekinesis, telepathy, um, psychic healing, plant communication, also elemental psychic powers like earth movers, wind walkers, um, water wielders, and then of course in the book I've created a couple of my own takes, my own spins on new fun psionic powers um, that are in the book. So um, anything that you use your mind to manifest something physical to happen would be a psionic power. And is Freaks of Nature, this book, is, is the first book, am I understanding this right, in something called the Scion Chronicles? Yes, the first book of, of a series. Um, but I'm trying to get the word out um, that the first book is out so people will buy it so we can have 
a sequel. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Of course, that's a, that's an important thing. All right, so, so let's let's um, let's see. The, the main character, the protagonist, is a 15 year old named Devin, and yeah. he, and he is the person who we were referring to who could uh, speak to or communicate with plants. Correct? Yes. Yes. And um, he he was born with his powers, and it's what has happened is. Um, 18 years previously, there was a global Ebola pandemic, and the vaccine um, triggered something, and babies were starting to be born with these blue eyes, and they had these incredible psychic powers. So these kids have been born with their powers. Now, it's only one in 20,000 births, so it's a smaller group of kids. But nevertheless, they were considered dangerous, and that most of them were taken away from their families and put in government detainment facilities. And my book starts with poor Devin, who talks to plants. He's bullied at school. He doesn't have a cool power. Uh, but he is the only one who manages to escape to um, rendezvous with the resistance. And he's hoping to escape, and he wants to go back home um, to see his family. And, of course, that doesn't happen. He, he gets intercepted by the military, put on a transport with these other kids who have also escaped their detainment facilities, and they're in big trouble. And then one of them says, I, I can get you out of here, but I'm not, I'm not taking just anybody. And they each, in turn, tell their stories as they're on this trip because they uh. all want to escape and go. Some want to go home. Some want, you know, to, to just be free. You know, they each have a different motivation um, for um, being where they are. So you get to see from first-person present tense because they link minds, each person's story. So I get to walk, as a writer, I get to walk in um, five different character shoes, and it was it was a really a, a challenge, and it was also fun to write. Oh and, wow! Uh, there's a lot of humor in it too. And, and I guess this is a writer's question more than anything. But was it di- was it difficult and or different to write a novel as opposed to a screenplay? It's different. It's different. The screenplay is completely visual, and of course you've got the dialogue um, as well to help tell the story. But you tell it visually, so there's no feelings. Um, there's no inner thoughts. Um, there's, you can't read about the panic or the, the fear that somebody feels. Mm-hmm. You have to show it. Okay. And um, so writing a novel, there's so much more, so many more things I can, tools I can use to convey the emotions and, uh, of the character and also actually hear their thoughts, see what they feel, or read what they feel, write what they feel. Um, and that's really important because you, you can't, do that in screenplay. It's all visual storytelling, and feelings have to be told. <laughs> right, Very noted right. by the actor, you know, but it depends on how right. good your actor is. Right. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I've never been in that world, but I've often wondered how an actor and or a director knows any of that stuff, I mean, in order to pull it off. What what do you mean to get the right performance? Yeah, like right? if like if you if all you have is a screenplay and it's just saying uh, you know enter enter the room and and uh, start talking. How do you know that you're sad, happy? I mean, and and d- well, that's where the talent of the director and the actor come into play. Uh-huh. I mean, you know, um, uh, there's a lot more to being an actor and a director than just showing up and getting a paycheck. Um, there, the actor has to learn how to go deep with him, him, himself or herself and find that motivation and bring it to the script as well. And um, it, it's, it's hard to do. It's not as easy as it sounds. Um, and directors as well, the talent there is not only knowing where to place the camera and how to light a room, but how to get that performance out of the actor, the one that the director really wants. So it's, it's, it's a lot of talent. Uh, you also uh, drew on your experiences from playing board games, and that is pretty fascinating in today's world of uh, computers. Well, I think um, computers are just um, another, w- an easier way to to be playing uh, Dungeons and Dragons. We didn't have the fancy computers back in the day, so we had to use our imaginations. And now you get to play a video game and be in the game. But you don't have to use your imagination. You just sit back and watch and play and use your um, hand-eye coordination (laughs) to survive the next thing. So, again, I think it's an extension of of those days back. I've read a lot of interviews with writers, 
directors, actors, and they've all, a lot of them say, I play Dungeons and Dragons. Oh, really? Oh, that's, that's pretty interesting. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, lots of writers. I have a copy of the book. Wendy sent us a copy. It's called Freaks of Nature. I think a, a young reader in your family will like it, and don't tell anybody, but you'll like it too. Uh, <laughs> call me if you want the copy that was sent to us. The number is 622 WOCA. The rest of us have to go buy it. Wendy, do you have a website? Yes, I do. It's um, www.wendybrotherlin.com. And I'm also on Facebook of Freaks of Nature by Wendy Brotherlin. Please go check out my pages. Oh, excellent. Well, I will do that. Uh, Wendy, thank you for being on the air with us today. Well, thank you for having me and have a wonderful day. Thank you. You too. We'll be right back. Weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Safe boating is no accident. We'll see more clouds than sun today with a shower and thunderstorm or two around the high 86 to 90. And mostly cloudy tonight with a couple of showers and a thunderstorm, low 71 to 75. For tomorrow, times of clouds and sun with a shower and heavy thunderstorm or two around high 86 to 90. For Saturday, a mix of sun and clouds with a couple of thunderstorms, mainly in the afternoon, the high 85 to 89. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Joe Lundberg. Are you in need of custom screen printing, embroidery, or promotion?